Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. I want to show you something quite cool today around showcasing growth uh, effectively. So I've got an example here that I'm going to work through, but there's so many different scenarios where you want to represent growth really well, okay? And a lot of the techniques that I'm going to go through can be replicated in lots of different scenarios. Um, so, so please don't get too uh, caught up in, in the specific one that I'm working through here because the techniques are key, especially around the formulas that you want to use. So basically what I wanted to show is I wanted to show I've calculated the profits of my particular company, but uh, I don't just want to show generic you know, or, or simple profit numbers. I want to see, okay, what was the growth over time periods, right? Uh, over you know, from this year to last year, I want to see what the growth was, and I want to be able to represent that in a scatter chart that allows me uh, to see okay, well, where are these clustering clusterings of uh, good performing stores, or poor performing stores, or average performing stores? And not only that, I wanted to be able to showcase this cluster um, because this is data from a US company. Um, I wanted to be represented in a spatial way, so I could identify if there was any clusters, you know, spatially. If there was, um, you know, a strong sales just on or good growth on just the um, East Coast, for example. Now, all of these pieces of information are just great ways to create conversations, right? And so you can represent it in a way where. Um, consumers can view it and then think, okay, well, why? Why are there poor? Why is there a clustering of poor performing stores versus good performing stores, etc.? Um, and how we, can we replicate the behaviors and performance in one area into another area, or you know, is it just not possible? So all of these great uh, conversations um, and <coughs> strategies can be derived from good information like this. <coughs> okay, so. We've got to build this up. We're going to utilize measure this measure branching technique I talk about a lot, right? So you've got to start simple, calculate what your profits are. But then this is where we then start jumping into DAX formula, right? Okay, so I've got this is a this is a showcase resource that was uh, from a, a recent um, learning summit. If you want to view the showcase, you can uh, just at the uh, you can have a play around with it. Um, uh, not the desktop model, but the actual uh, live. Um, online service uh, model uh, you can at the showcase page which will, which will be linked below in the description but I'll just go through what uh, uh, formulas I've utilized to actually create this because there's a little bit to it okay now the first thing that we need to do is we need to just work out okay simply what is the profit growth to last year okay uh, or what is the profit difference right <clears throat> so all I've done I won't, I won't show the simple stuff like total profits, etc. Uh, but all I've done is I've uh, gone total profits minus profits last year. Okay, so you'll see here that this is purely just referencing measures, uh, a measure of just measures. And profits last year was a simple, very, very simple. I've gone over this many times, just a time intelligence function utilizing the same period last year. And so these will obviously update depending on whatever time context we place on here, whatever time context we select. So I can change the selection very quickly like that. But then I want to work out, okay, so I've got my profit difference. I want to work out my profit growth versus last year. Now, if you just think through this logically, it's relatively simple because all I want to do is I want to calculate my total profits minus my profits last year and then divide it by the profits we made last year okay so that's going to give us the profit growth that um, that we have achieved okay based on our last year results so if we have made exactly the same profits that we made last year it would be total profits minus profits last year equals zero minus uh, and then we would divide that by profits last year and then we would have zero growth right because of the zero in the numerator now um, now we've done that okay let's have a look at this visualization here now this is where you know, a little bit it becomes a little bit more advanced a little bit trickier now I didn't want to just showcase all of these results just in a scatter chart all the same color right because it doesn't really provide that much information it i mean it, it does provide information but it can be represented in a much more effective way right and this is where this dynamic grouping technique really comes into its own because i wanted to be able to very quickly visualize who were you know the best growth 
uh, areas or, or states in the US versus some of our lowest ones, right? I wanted to, I wanted to see those groupings um, you know, really effectively in the visualization. Okay, so what we need to do to do is we need to use some supporting tables. Okay, so I'll just show you how uh, what these supporting tables look like. Okay, so you'll see here this is this is the key supporting table we have. Uh, in this particular group, these groupings that we've created. Okay, so I created this just by going into data and I just input all of these figures very, very quickly. Um, and I just set high growth is between those two numbers, average growth, low growth, and no growth. So if they are between zero and minus 100%, then obviously no growth, they're going backwards, right? And that's gonna be re represented in the no growth group, which is this particular group down here. Now to get these particular groups represented on this particular uh, visualization, we need to utilize some more advanced formulas, okay? So this is where the, these, they sit within this uh, group I've called pattern recognition here. And I've utilized exactly, basically exactly the same technique, okay? Exactly the same technique in both of these formulas. All I've done is I've changed what calculation we were doing, okay? now. I'm only going to go through this technique in this particular one because this is what is represented in uh, in this one here. Okay. Oh, actually, they both are, but we'll we'll go through this particular axis here just so you get the technique. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to work out, or we we, we don't need to work out. We need to represent uh, or break up the particular states based on this result. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work through every single state, and that's what this particular values function here does. We're going to iterate through each individual state, and for each state, we're gonna work out what the profit growth versus last year was, and see what group it is in. So we iterate through every single state, and then we iterate through every single regional group, which is the, what, the table I just showed you, and, and figure out, okay, well, what group does this profit and growth versus last year land in based on this particular logic? Is it greater than the min? And is it less than or equal to the max? If that particular state evaluates to true in a particular group, then it then gets associated to that particular group based on this visualization, okay? So if we see that this performance group, this actually comes from that, that table, that's, what that, that's that column that we created, um, called performance group and then that filters inside the particular visualization and flows through the context of that flows through into this formula and says okay break up my states based on this particular uh, calculation okay and that's how we get this breakdown by group in, in inside the scatter chart which looks in my opinion so much better now the other thing I did is, that I'll just quickly go through it, I did exactly the same, you'll see here, ex this part of the format is exactly the same, even profit growth versus last year, the only difference in this case is where we're representing profit difference, and that's because we have the axis here, where we also want to show the profit, um, profit difference, so we want to say profit difference, absolute number, and the profit growth percentage number as well on this particular axis. I think you know, from a dynamic calculation perspective, you know, we can change to any time frame here and um, you'll see that that formula updates, maintains those groupings based on the um, out, outlines of the groups that we created in that table. Um, and it's just a really effective and dynamic way to visualize um, any sort of growth metrics over over different time periods and I think consumers will really really love um, seeing data in this particular way okay so I'm going to wrap things up then hopefully you got a lot out of uh, uh, the techniques here you know we've got measure branching then we're moving into some more sort of segmentation and grouping techniques with tax um, really powerful stuff so hopefully you got a lot out of it and can start thinking about utilizing these sort of visualization um, and formula techniques in your own models. Um, if, you, if you liked it, then like the video and got uh, like, like the content, uh, certainly throw us a like, really appreciate it. And don't uh, forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of great content um, coming out to you, so I want to get that into your hands as soon as I can. Okay, all the very best. Uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.